Hey YouTube, Joe Boy here. So, wow. One Piece chapter 1043 is out. If you guys haven't checked out that chapter yet, I suggest that you do so because I will be spoiling you as well as everybody else. Everybody will be spoiling you now that you have. Let's begin. Wow. It is like incredibly surreal that we are in this moment right now that this moment this chapter this reveal it's like a real thing because i mean damn i feel old we've been waiting for this since fishman island which was like 12 years ago i know that oda primed us for this and i i expected something about joy boy in this arc i wasn't sure what it was going to be a reveal of who joy boy was how much a small detail i still wasn't prepared but i think even more than that oda just knows how to deliver Look, time and time again, without fail, he doesn't want you to believe a thing will happen and works his hardest that the moment before it happens is when it is most difficult to believe that thing. It is absurdly consistent and works almost every single time. And I know that it's coming. As early as last week, right, there's a question, is Momo Joy Boy? And I tell you guys this time and again, the first answer is often the right answer. You'll go hundreds of chapters in the past, some idea will occur to our brains naturally. It's like, oh, you know, is Lola the daughter of Big Mom? Uh, and there's many examples of this. Is Luffy Joy Boy? Seems like the easy answer. And then what Oda does is he tries to convince you that the easy answer is not the answer. And then he comes back to it and it's the truth and all the BS and the doubt that he throws at you, that he tries to make you believe, makes it all feel more worthwhile. But it's even more than that. If you just had a panel at the end of this chapter where Kaido exclaims that, you know, Luffy is Joy Boy or somebody else does that, then, you know, there would still be people that were would be really excited for the reveal. But I don't think that it would reach the level of hype that the chapter actually provides. Simply stated, it just wouldn't hit quite as different. Because at the end of the day, Momo confusion or not, Luffy being Joy Boy is not a monumental reveal by itself. It is not the most surprising thing in the universe. In my opinion, the best reveals in a story are either incredibly surprising while also making complete sense in an unexpected way, and or it gives you what you want, but it does it better than you expected. And that's pretty much 1043 in a nutshell, because it's not just a reveal that Luffy is Joy Boy or something similar to that. There is things happening at that exact same moment, which are mind blowing and exciting. Luffy is literally melting. He also may or may not be literally dead. What the hell does that mean? The conspiracy theory level of this chapter is like a thousand out of ten. In large part because this wasn't just the reveal of Joy Boy. At the same time, we're given new mind-blowing mysteries to chew over. That suggest answers or things that we weren't prepared for. I'm sure that not everyone is necessarily going to appreciate this, so I want to take a moment to do so. The layering of all of these reveals or suggestions of reveals at the same time to create this moment is incredible, incredibly difficult, and was amazing. So you guys already know what we're gonna do, right? Joy Boy theories! All right, it's time to speculate. We're gonna speculate and I'm gonna get really crazy and it's gonna sound plausible probably. And uh, just buckle up. But let's start with the rest of the chapter. The beginning, I think, was somewhat predictable. Cypherpol interfered in the battle just as what happened against Odin, and Kaido wasn't happy. But I'll admit that uh, Kaido's reaction, his anger, was a little less than I thought that it would be. Because by the middle of the chapter, where he comes down from the roof, for the most part, he seems in control. I was half expecting him to go full drunk mode or just, you know, kill everybody mode. What we actually got was comparatively tame. But from all this, the thing that actually has me most curious is after Kaido has realized that he's won and it wasn't necessarily of his doing, he says, do you know what you've done? And my answer for this, you know, my opinion, if Kaido was talking to me and I did this, I, I don't know what I've done. 
Why is it so important to you that nobody interfere in your fight, Kaido? I'm burning to know the answer to that question. But anyway, the next scene focused on Kaomatsu. Apparently, some people are trapped. Uh, there's a fire, and because the island is in the air, they have no access to water. And he basically reminds those people, or tells them, to not die. Uh, but what was interesting about the scene was that Oda focused on the third member of Cypherpol, CP0, because we know that two of them have been active. We have Mass, the boss guy, and the other guy who Izo defeated, but they've been sort of on their own. And this third one has been missing, so now we see him, and it feels like pretty soon something's going to happen with him. The last we got from him was a call on Adinamushi to the other agents in which he said that he reminded them to go capture Nico Robin, but he also warned them to escape, that the island was in danger. So we see him now observing events, so that fits. But anyway, as Oda took the time to focus on him in this chapter when he didn't need to, I imagine that he's going to do something important here very soon. We then see Kaido appear through the hole in the ceiling, claiming that he has defeated Luffy and challenging everyone else. Obviously, you know, you get some reaction to Luffy's defeat. I think that a lot of it is similar to what we've seen before, but we get this interesting line from Law. He says, Straw Hat Yaw's voice has vanished. I think that this was expected of Momonosuke, but not of Law. In fact, I think that Oda has been very subtle about Law having the ability to hear, you know, people's voices. In this way, all right, not the normal way. A lot of people are claiming that this is just a normal observation hockey ability, but at the same time, I think that not everyone, you know, has the same reaction. What about Sanji? What about Zoro? We know that they have observation, but, you know, hearing the voice, this power seems somewhat niche. We've been with Law for hundreds of chapters now, but this is the first time that Oda has decided to reveal that Law can also hear the voices and presence of other people, perhaps in a similar way as Kobe, and I wonder if, you know, why he wasn't more explicit with this earlier. Like for instance, in Zo, I think that I speculated in the past that there was a panel, which we're not gonna show here, but uh, perhaps indicated that Law could hear Zunisha the same as Luffy and Momonosuke, despite the fact that he doesn't react at all to the elephant, and it seems very low key and hidden. So I just want to know why, especially now that this power is somewhat confirmed. But anyway, we obviously know about Luffy at the end of the chapter and something epic is going to come from that very soon. But in the short term, we have a setup of conflict between Kaido and Momonosuke. Kaido specifically asks for Momonosuke, which I thought was an interesting decision. I guess that Kaido views Momonosuke as the spiritual leader of Wano and that in order to annihilate the rebellion once and for all, he needs to defeat him. Which should lead to a reveal of what Momonosuke actually looks like now, I hope. So that seems like it's going to happen soon. But you guys already know, I still hope that Momonosuke being a dragon is of some importance to Prophecy or Kaido or something, so I hope that's revealed too. But then we get a conversation between Momonosuke and Yamato, where Yamato is encouraging Momonosuke to fight, and Momonosuke wants to surrender. This is actually a really interesting conversation that I could spend some time talking about because it almost feels like mixed messaging, right? There's been times where Oda has criticized samurai culture. They throw their lives away too easily, like they're trying too hard to die. And then as Momonosuke sort of takes a stance and argues, well, what's the point in fighting? We just throw away lives needlessly. We then have an argument for samurai culture. Fight until your last breath. But rather than Oda being wishy-washy about this idea, I think that we've yet to get the real moral of the story. And I think it'll be something like, the answer depends. Like, it shouldn't be extreme either way. It's not, all. you don't always need to throw your life away, and you also don't always need to run away. There's a time to run and survive, and there's a time to fight until the very bitter end. And it's not always one way or the other. Sometimes surrendering saves people, but sometimes you have to fight to the very bitter end because winning is the only way to save people. But yeah, I don't know exactly, but I think that Oda has something planned here. And then of course we have the end of the chapter. But before we get to the end, this is 
uh, an obligatory mention about Dendro. We have not seen Dendro forever. He has disappeared. I think that it is very obvious that he is going to do something very soon, so prepare yourself. But yeah, let's talk about the end of this chapter. I can't be the only one who thinks that Luffy has actually died. I know that it isn't confirmed uh, that this is the truth, but certain things happen in this chapter which makes this idea, as ridiculous as it sounds, plausible. Luffy has been knocked out in this arc alone, at least twice. And never once do we see any comments about Luffy's voice disappearing. But in this chapter, we got it from two characters. We got it from Law and we got it from Omonosuke. Two characters that you would have expected, perhaps earlier in the arcs, to have had similar concerns, similar reactions when Luffy was knocked off the island and passed out and fell into the sea, but we don't see that. And it's not as if there was an opportunity. Momonosuke, for instance, immediately after Luffy is knocked into the sea, we have a scene with Momonosuke talking to Yamato, and not once does he say out loud or seem concerned about the fate of Luffy. There's no reaction about Luffy's voice disappearing. It makes this defeat feel different, even more final. But there's another panel which adds intrigue. It's revealed earlier in Onigashima that Kaido can hear people's voices the same as Momonosuke and, and Law. So I think that Kaido would know whether or not Luffy was alive or dead. And he states definitively that Straw Hat Luffy is dead. And as another fun fact, after Kaido knocked Luffy off of the roof and watched him fall into the sea, not once does he say that Luffy has died. I think at best there was the assumption that Luffy would die because he fell into the sea, but not that he had actually already died. Again, this moment in this chapter hits a little differently. Luffy isn't just defeated, he is dead. Or at least it could be true. I'm not going to say definitively that it is because we don't know that, but there's an argument to be made. And as this coincides with Zoro's situation right now, where there is a question as to whether he lives or not. I wonder if Oda might turn this into the next thing that is absolutely going to destroy us. Because the honest truth is, whether people want to acknowledge it or not, but in this chapter, it has basically been confirmed that somebody who is dead is not as dead as you might think. Obviously, I'm talking about Joy Boy. Like, I honestly don't even know where to begin with this. We see Luffy at the end of the chapter. He is knocked out or dead or whatever. It doesn't matter. There's a scene of a conversation between Momonosuke and Zunisha where Zunisha can hear it. And Momo doesn't know what it is. And Zunisha says, I can hear Joy Boy. He has returned. And then Luffy makes a noise. He says, Nika, which is a kind of audible laugh and not his normal laugh. So first things first, some obvious conclusions that we can make if Oda isn't just straight up trolling us. The Sun God, Nika, and Joy Boy, same person. Like, that just seems, I mean, I don't have to argue that, do I? This is actually pretty similar to uh, what we speculated before. I think, I believe what I actually speculated when the Sun God, Nika, was introduced was I thought that Joy Boy was a person that existed during the Void Century and that their spirit had been uh, reborn into various bodies over the course of the next 800 years. So I thought that the spirit of Joy Boy has lived multiple lives after Joy Boy himself has died. And one of those lives was the sun god Nika, or the person that created the, the legend of the sun god Nika, and the next person, or the current person with this soul, would be Luffy. This theory still is plausible. But after this chapter, even though it is very similar to what we speculated and you could still speculate it, I would say that it is not my belief anymore. And the reason for this is that it does not appear as though Luffy has the soul of Nika or Joy Boy reincarnated. It appears as though his body is cohabitated by Nika, Joy Boy. Like there's Luffy's soul and personality is distinct from whatever it is that we see in this chapter. The main reason I feel this way is because of the distinct laughter. It's not Luffy's normal she, 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 it's Nika. Um, and that itself implies that somebody other than Luffy is the one making the noise. 
If he was simply reincarnated one soul traveling over time, then Luffy's normal laugh would probably be Nika. So he's being possessed. And we gotta ask ourselves, how the hell is Joy Boy Nika possessing Luffy? What's funny about this is this is another thing that we have speculated for this arc. I've talked about the land of the dead, the dead coming back to life, and even the dead possessing the living. We've talked about this with Odin and, and Yamato, that I thought that Odin, who is dead, is going to possess Yamato's body so that Yamato becomes Odin. You might then think, oh, well, this must be what JB believes, right? He speculated it now, even if it's different characters, this thing has come to pass. But no, don't believe this either. I don't think that we should ignore any of the hints, any of the details that Oda decided to include in this last panel. And one we haven't talked about yet is that Luffy is literally melting. And so this was actually a theory that other people made. I've never made this, but I've heard it, that people thought that Luffy's awakening would make him liquid because rubber is made from liquid. Just as a side note, I just want to say that the theory that Luffy's awakening would make him liquid, uh, be able to transform things around him as liquid, was so much better than Luffy, you know, turning the world around him into a bouncy house. That was probably the most common theory because that was the most straightforward application of what we already knew. But also because it was straightforward, it would have made it, I think, incredibly underwhelming and overall probably not very creative if literally anybody could come up with luffy's awakening uh, probably wasn't going to be a good choice but now we're here and luffy is melting and i think that i mean it's awakening that's what i think it doesn't have to be i suppose but that just seems like the right answer and you'll note that it isn't just luffy that is melting it's also luffy's straw hat which seems to coincide with Doflamingo's description of how an awakening should work. Even if it isn't a bouncy house, Luffy is transforming the nature of the world, inanimate objects around him, just like other examples we've seen. It's just in an entirely new form. So let's add this to the other things that were revealed in this moment and combine them all together because that is what is most satisfying for me to do. Nika is Joy Boy. Nika and Joy Boy are possessing Luffy's body at the same time that Luffy's devil fruit is awakening. The tinfoil theory that makes the most sense to me right now, what I actually believe, is that Nika and Joy Boy, their souls, their spirits, reside within the Gomu Gomu no Mi. They are the devils which exist within the devil fruit. And it appears as though awakening the fruit, and maybe also while being unconscious and or dead, is a way in which this fact can be revealed. So let's just break it all down here and try to make sense of this. We know that Shanks uh, stole the Gomu Gomu no Mi, that it was a fruit that had value to the world government and to Shanks. Shanks never intended to give it to Luffy, but Luffy ate it, and then afterwards Shanks decided to bet on Luffy. From this alone, you can presume that the Gomu Gomu no Mi is a devil fruit of some kind of importance. Yet throughout the story, no real attention was paid to Luffy's Gomu Gomu no Mi. In fact, most of the characters disregarded it as a lesser than fruit. So in part, this can be explained because they don't know the truth. They don't know about all of these secrets that have been covered up and lost to history. But at the same time, there's characters that would have known this. And that's clear enough by the way that the Gorosei reacted to Luffy having Cyberpole uh, basically go out of their way to ensure that he was defeated and killed. At the time and now, that felt like an oh shit moment. Luffy is close to becoming Joy Boy or being a person who is a problem. And he wasn't before, but all of a sudden, as his fight with Kaido is going on, the Gorosei knee-jerk freak out. We must kill Luffy now. And so the easy answer is they did this because of Luffy's devil fruit. But we can't ignore literal hundreds of chapters in which it wasn't obvious that Luffy's fruit was important. So in my opinion, having the Gomu Gomu no Mi alone is not enough to warrant concern. And we might have gotten a hint about this through Kaido. After Kaido defeats Luffy and throws him into the ocean, he says, so you couldn't be Joy Boy either. I presume that if Joy Boy is tied to the Gomu Gomu no Mi, there's been many people who have eaten the fruit over the course of history 
but the majority of them, if not all of them, failed to become Joy Boy. So I think that there must be some step that Luffy has achieved that previous users of the Gomu Gomu no Mi didn't, and I think that that could be Awakening. This is what the Gorosei said in chapter 1037, that's impossible. That fruit is nothing but a legend now, even for us. It hasn't awakened for centuries. To be clear, even now, it is still possible that the Gorosei are talking about another fruit. However, Luffy and his fruit may be doing something weird, so we're gonna go based on that. So if they are talking about the Gomu Gomu no Mi, it would be a confirmation of the theory that the step that previous users failed to achieve was awakening. And the reason why, even today, Luffy wasn't considered to be a threat, even though he had this fruit, is because they never expected it to awaken. I really expect quite a lot of people to complain about this detail because, you know, they're going to be dissatisfied because all of a sudden the Gomu Gomu no Mi is important when it should have been important all along. But just honestly, guys, we don't know how Devil Fruits awaken. We don't know how common it is. And when you have a thousand years of nobody awakening a devil fruit, it is very fair, in my opinion, for it to become something disregarded. So we're obviously in the weeds here, right? There's a lot of things, we're speculating a lot of things, and we, we're essentially forced to make too many assumptions because there's just so much possibility. But I haven't yet really focused on the craziest thing that I've said. Joy Boy and Nika are the devil and the devil fruit. I want you guys to keep this in mind. Death is a crucial theme or an element in Onigashima. And so we have the fire festival and the idea of the fire festival is about communicating with the dead, the idea of the dead, they exist somewhere, all of this. We've talked previously in a speculation, comparing the superstitions of Wano with the superstitions of the Shandians. The Shandians thought that by playing music, their ancestors would be called down from the heavens to reside within trees. It's also a very common speculation, and this is canon in the original drafts of One Piece, which are no longer a thing, but they were a thing in one shots, that devil fruits come from a tree, right? That's just, I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone believes that. In the one shots of One Piece, there was only one devil fruit. It was the Gomu Gomu no Mi, and they called it uh, the Gum Gum Tree. We also know that Smile Devil Fruit, which we do know how it is made roughly, involves trees, and the fruit come from trees. We also know that within a devil fruit exists some kind of spirit-like thing. The spirit-like thing was drawn in... I think it was Dressrosa, where they showed the cycle of the devil, how the person eats the devil fruit, they get the spirit of the devil within them, they die, and then the spirit of the devil fruit goes and inhabits another fruit, and so on and so forth. But it's depicted like a spirit. So just so we're clear here, all right, full transparency, what we know about devil fruits involves spirits and trees, which is very similar to the afterlife beliefs of the Shandians. We don't actually know what the devil in the devil fruit is. We don't know practically anything about devil fruits other than what they do to people. How were they created? How do they work? We will eventually get these answers, but we don't have them now. But I think that I believe as of this moment right now that devil fruits were created from the souls of the people of the ancient kingdom. This great kingdom which existed in the past and is associated with Joy Boy, it's lost to history. What happened to them? I think that their spirits were in some way. We don't have an answer for this and we're not going to have an answer for this, so this is a total asshole, but in some way trapped within the cycle of Devil Fruits. I think that in order for this to make sense, the world government has to know how to trap someone's soul and then create a Devil Fruit. It's worth noting that not all Devil Fruits are ancient. There are some that are newer than others. So if you guys allow me a moment just to go off the walls and crazy specific just for the sake of it, just so that I can express to you sort of my head canon for this idea. First off, I think that reincarnation is real in the world of One Piece. I think that it's possible that Emu and the world government want to play God. That is to say, choose who gets reborn and who doesn't. So if you trap a soul within a double fruit, that soul is not reborn into the world. So it's a fate given to 
the people that the world government perceives as the worst of the worst or the most dangerous to everybody else. And that included Joy Boy. But over a period of 900 years, many others were also erased from history, erased from the cycle of rebirth. And they were aptly named devils. It's worth noting that many of the members of the Strat crew are all given epithets, or not all, but many are given epithets related to demons or devils. Notably among them, devil child Nico Robin. It associates the idea of devils and people like the Straw Hats. The heroes of the story are the devils. Then apply this to Joy Boy and the Gomu Gomu no Mi. It's a thing I think works. Devils who oppose gods. The Celestial Dragons. But yeah, guys, obviously we're filling in a lot of blanks here that, you know, it's an impossible task, I think. But you guys know that I need something to believe. When we have some sort of crazy thing happen, I need something to believe. And this is what it currently is. But the other speculation is that when a user awakens a devil fruit or consumes a devil fruit, we don't know for sure, they somehow become part of the devil fruit. So Joy Boy may be dead, but Joy Boy ha originally ate the Gomu Gomu no Mi and part of him still resides within that fruit. That's another way of looking at this. Either way, I prefer any interpretation that includes the Gomu Gomu no Mi as the reason why Joy Boy appeared. And overall, I'd say that there's a lot of things that we need clarification on, but the biggest one, the most immediate one, I feel like that we might get an answer for is how does this relate with prophecy? What does Kaido know? Kaido said you couldn't be Joy Boy either. So did he think that Luffy, that once somebody died, that they would show themselves to be Joy Boy? What, did, what exactly did he mean? And just random aside here, does this relate to Kaido's own desire to die? Did he try to become Joy Boy through death or near death, but maybe didn't know that the Gomu Gomu no Mi was important if that's how this works? And what's the clarification on Shanks? What exactly did Shanks know? I think that maybe the story of Joy Boy, what he became, what happened to him was mentioned on the Poneglyphs, that's fair. So Roger and Rayleigh knew, thereby Shanks could know. So then he sought out the Gomu Gomu no Mi because he was told that it was important to give it to maybe the right person. Luffy ended up eating it, so Shanks decided to believe in him. But like, specifically, what exactly does Shanks know? Odin was absolutely certain that Joy Boy would appear in Wano after 20 years, and that's exactly what happened, according to Zunisha. It also appears that the Gorosei and the world government knew something, because it wasn't until very recently, when it appeared as though Luffy was going to defeat Kaido, that I feel as though they took Luffy seriously. For hundreds of chapters, Luffy's done an enormous number of things of significance, but it isn't until this moment, just before now, that I felt like they viewed him as a real threat. Why now? But in actuality, Kaido defeats Luffy, and that's when Joy Boy appears. So did they not know that they were essentially causing Joy Boy to appear? Did they not know that? Or were they trying to make Joy Boy appear? Was that, you know, I? That's what seems like a reasonable thought to me because this moment doesn't necessarily happen without the world government's interference. It's a lot to unpack. Actually, I think it's too much to unpack. But I absolutely want to remind you guys that the end of this chapter is very open-ended. It's very vague, so let your minds run wild. This is absolutely a chapter where tell me what you think. What, how, what conclusions have you come to? Because they are just as valid as anyone else, pretty much. There was an insane high after I read the chapter. We got to this last panel and it's just like, oh my God. And then for me, you know, this is my experience. You're just barraged with thoughts until you're brain dead. That's where I'm at now. All I really know is I cannot wait for the official answer. It's crazy, man. Like there was, you know, this is just the end of the chapter. There was the rest of the chapter and I almost don't feel like talking about it. Like seriously, I almost don't feel like talking about it so that I can obsess and go through all the possible scenarios for what this could be. And I, I know that's probably a bad idea, but damn if I don't want to. This hit me harder than Emu and the giant straw hat, honestly. Like there's this alone changes the game entirely. 
you've got you know you've got something important it's a puzzle piece it fits somewhere and there's so many pieces you have so many pieces already you feel as though you can solve the puzzle and in the attempt to do so you realize oh my god i am terrible at this that's how i feel but anyway guys obviously this chapter was insane and awesome this is just about as good as it gets once again this is like the 30th chapter roughly in a row in which oda has knocked it out of the park you know we haven't even talked about like what is you know, generally what's going to happen in Wano after this. I think that you can believe that Joy Boy has appeared, so Luffy's probably going to get back up and then defeat Kaido, but there's just so much going on in the Big Mom Pirates, and it, ah, Break Week is going to kill me. But yeah, guys, as always, I'm curious as to what you guys think, whether you know something from the chapter that I might have missed. Just share your thoughts. Like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video. Subscribe if you want to be notified for my future content. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day.